Well, Magna X, where we all know that this card is going to dominate the entire format. Digi Cards got four copies of the new Demi Vmon in BT16, where it gives you extra DP all turns as long as this Digimon has two or more colors. Really, really important because it helps you meet certain DP thresholds that you're going to need for Magna X, especially when it comes to the combos, which we'll talk about more later on. Now, let's talk about level threes. Of course, it's all going to be Vmons. Four copies of the promo movie one, just because it can help you reduce your Digivolution cost as long as you have a Tamer and the when attacking to let you draw one with its inherited bit is not once per turn two, which is always really helpful as you find your pieces. Then we got four copies of the BT12 Vmon, which helps you search, grabbing yourself a Davis, grabbing yourself anything that has a free trait, which is almost any Digimon in this particular deck as well, is going to be really helpful and crucial when it comes to early stages. Now we got the brand new BT16 Vmon, which is both blue and red. It can help you gain memory back, which is almost effectively just like the promo Vmon from the movie pack. And with its inheritable giving you the extra 2000 DP during your turn, also helps you beef up your top end so you make sure to swing safely strong with your bodies. Speaking of the level fours, now we got Magnamons to talk about. Of course, four copies of the SC17 one, just a fantastic security bomb to de-digivolve one on your opponent's Digimon, and you can digivolve onto it afterwards. And when you digivolve, you get to trash your opponent's top source of Digimon for every color it has return bounce something that doesn't have any sources. It still has blocker and armor purge all in one package. It's both black and blue, just a really strong card and really fantastic one to definitely have and run as a four of. The other four of is still, of course, the older one from BT8, being able to unsuspend, also having blocker, also having armor purge and gaining DP for every armor trait in your trash can really help you rack up this Digimon's power to help you swing over stuff as well, which is exactly why this card is still played in this deck for sure. Then we got two copies of the BT13 one. It serves as a blocker. It gives you a bit of floating capability similar to armor purge, which it doesn't have, but it helps you play Vmon's back and it gives you a bit more draw power, which is always a decent one to get into in the early stages of the game. That's it for level fours. Let's talk about level fives. Two copies of Zudo Ace just as your main counter hand trap against your opponents when they attack. Since you strip sources with the SC17 Magnamon, you can strip even further with Zudo Ace and control the opponent's board and then even bounce further as well with it, which is mainly your bridge from your four to your fives and then to your sixes. But you don't really need to run a lot of level fives in this deck because the main level six is Magna X right here. Magna X is capable of skipping the Digivolution levels with its alternative Digivolution requirements to go on top of any Magnamon for five costs as long as it's two colors. All your Magnamons have two colors or you can Digivolve for four costs on top of any black, yellow, or blue level five. It has Blocker, it has Armor Purge. This card is absolutely insane with its when Digivolving effect because if it has Magnamon X Antibody or any Armor Form trait card in its sources, until the enemy opponent's next turn, it gains extra 3000 DP and this card becomes immune to any effects, meaning it includes options, Digimon, everything, and being able to climb all the way up to 15k DP just makes it almost impossible to get over. And this card can also unsuspend with its secondary effect, all turns once per turn when a card is removed from the security stack, whether yours or your opponent's, you get to activate its when digivolving all over again. So they can rack it up and unsuspend multiple times, make multiple attacks and gain the immunity all over again, making it almost difficult and impossible for your opponents to take this guy down. This is just absolutely one of the most game changing and most powerful cards we have yet to see. Therefore, you definitely run it as a four of. So did you know there's also a couple of ways to play Magnamon X aside from the Magnamon deck alone? You can also play this in Yellow Vaccine or even Jessmon GX. And if you guys want to see updates for those, be sure to let me know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe to stay tuned as they'll be coming soon as well. Or you can join the Evolve Club to see the deck lists which are on there already. Then we have two copies of Death X right here as my sort of level seven choice just to deal with wide boards wipe things, delete things, and yeah, just a really strong staple to always have for sure. That's it for all of our Digimon. Let's talk about our Tamers. 
The first one being the movie promo Davis, which gives you a memory at the start of main phase as long as you have a free and its traits. If it's on play, you mainly just want to play your Vmons. By being able to play your Vmons, you can then continue to search and get a lot of value off of it constantly. That's the really main tamer that you want to see as much as you can. And then for our memory tamer of choice, we're actually playing Shu Yu Lin, which is a very interesting one but it has actually quite a bit of synergy. Not only it becomes your memory tamer, but it can actually mind link with a Digimon that has X antibody or Digipolice trait. Your Magnemon X has X antibody trait, and that's mainly so that you can mind link with it so that you can gain alliance to make multiple checks so you can then synergize with its when digivolving effect to unsuspend and make more checks once again. And one of the really nice aspects is that it also gives it reboot so you can unsuspend and have a strong blocker during your opponent's turn so your Magnet X is not going to be threatened. That's it for Tamers. Now we got options which we have a lot to talk about. The first one is Awakening of the Golden Knight. Magnet X does cost 5 to digivolve on top of Magnemon but with this card you essentially make it for three costs, reducing it, making it way cheaper, and it gives it DP reduction protection until the end of your opponent's turn. Security effect helps you return your Magnemon from your trash, add it back to hand, and you get to add this card to your hand as well afterwards. As long as you have an armor form and traits Digimon on the board, you can use this card without meeting color requirements as well. Yeah, definitely a shortcut to help you climb into Magnet X super quickly. Then I'm running three copies of Blinding Raid, not only just the game memory, this card is very key. Opponents are going to try to play around Magnemon's X immunity by not attacking into security first. And by doing so, this is where Blinding Ray comes in so you can proactively use it during your own turn to take out your own security so that your Magnet X can gain the immunity all over again within your own control. That's the main reason why we play Blinding Ray and that's the whole idea of it as well. Then we got two copies of Heaven's Judgment, which is just insanely bonkers because Magnet X being one of the first Digimon out there that is triple color you can basically wipe out stuff all the way up to 24k dp alongside with this card alone and being able to do that is just absolutely insane then there's also final zubagon punch which is the more offensive utility tool that i really like in this deck because the fact that magnamon x is black as well it gives you access to this and it gives an extra 3000 DP. You guys can see why the DP thresholds becomes really important by having that specific Digi-8 card under Magnemon. Once Magnemon X is 13k DP by base, adding this extra 3000 is gonna give it reboot, blocker, and security plus one until the end of your opponent's turn. And with that, you can deal massive damage and simply win games just off this card alone. Then for the rest of the options, I'm just going for the standard staples of two copies, blue memory boost, and two mental training, just for further searching, which is always really crucial for the deck as well. Tech choices and other cards that you guys can also include in this deck. There's still the jamming Vmon, which helps give you the early aggression when it comes to chipping away your opponent's security. There's also the BT8 Vmon, which can grab you two color cards. Keep in mind, it can only grab a two color card specifically. Therefore, you can't actually grab Magnemon X with it, at least not the new one. Then there is also Gold Vigermon, which also has armor purge, but is also mainly used to help you control the game a little bit more just because it can DP reduce and stun things for an entire turn as well. Some of you guys might also be wondering, how about the older BT9 Magnet X? And I still think this is a pretty decent card because it can help redirect attacks infinitely, giving you a little bit of defense and prevent your opponents from taking down your security, especially in the early stages of the game. And if you guys ever would like to run it, I definitely recommend as a one of. Then for other level sevens, aside from Death X, you guys can actually go for Jessmon GX for even more aggression. Tucking in your Magnet X to unsuspend multiple times, swing over stuff, blitz, pierce, and it has blocker, and it also gains security plus one for every royal knight trait in its digivolution cards this is just really really good synergy overall but if you guys want a little bit of a budget variant instead of running death x or even just one gx blitz omni is actually the way to go just to unsuspend and make that extra attack can help you finish the games off as well just because it can go on top of magna x aside from shu yulin as the memory tamer you guys can also run tk which is fantastic not only it can help you search your security, but being able to grab that card effectively will help you trigger Magna X's effect. But not only that, it also helps you grab yellow cards such as Blinding Ray, which you don't want to see in security and rather see in your
your hand as well. For other aggression options, Fire Rocket is still really good. Everything that you level four has armor form, so you can go for multiple checks with it and just go for the attacks and take down multiple securities against your opponent. And of course, there's also X Antibody Proto Form, which I kind of like as a clutch. You can always help you digivolve into Magnet X for reduced costs with it and have it underneath to sort of give it like another layer of like recyclability whenever it does get removed. And last but not least, Hammer Spark, just a really fantastic general blue staple to have, gain extra memory and also come up from security, gain even more memory, potentially passing opponent's turn or limiting their plays. All right, combos and how to play the all new Magna X. With your opening hand, you wanna see cards that can help you find a little bit pieces, play around the memory gauge. Shu Yulin is also great because you don't have a way to play it out for free, other side from security. So sometimes if you have it in your hand, you wanna play around them. Really just play around the memory gauge and give your opponent as little as possible. But really important is to make sure that you see your Vmons and any of your Magnamons. You just need to see one of each and it's usually okay because you can just Digivolve in the back and you wanna Digivolve on top of it afterwards and sort of see which different Vmons you have to help you to play. Here's a very good example. I personally like to have this Vmon and then if I ever hatch, I will Digivolve in the back, but I wouldn't Digivolve into Magnamon in the back either because then I'm not utilizing its cost reduction effectively. But you wanna make sure you see Davis and your Tamers effectively too because you won't be able to reduce it without it. So when I play Davis, this is the one I like to generally play, of course, because you can search immediately off of it and you're getting the most value. Otherwise, secondary would be this one, and then it will be in this kind of order. Sometimes you can Digimon this one, and then once you have everything up, you can push this out. You have two Vmons to work with. You can Digivolve into any Magnemons that you have. The one that you're gonna go into the most is gonna be this one to control the board in the early stages of the game. If your opponent has Digimon, if you wanna attack a little bit more aggressively, this would be the other one, but it mainly pays off the most during the mid and later stages of the game. Otherwise, this one can also give you a bit more draw power and flowing capability. So when you Digivolve into this one, you basically gain the memory back. Now, if you have these two on the board, as a, as a matter of fact, when you Digivolve, you're basically reducing the cost and you're gaining a memory back effectively, Digivolving it into a Magnemon for one cost, which is really, really memory efficient. So this is the Vmon that you normally want to sort of keep on the board and uh, as much as you can to get these value. And this is the one that you always want to be Digivolving afterwards on top of these two. Sometimes if you just have to Digivolve here when they, because you need to cycle a card, because you just need to get that extra DP and utilize these inheritables. If you have to, then you'd be so that way. And you just really want to just chip away at your opponent's security when you can as quickly as possible. By chipping away early with your Magnus, you get to deal damage to your opponents bit by bit to set up as you get closer to lethal. Now, once you have these magazines set up, this is when you would want to see your Magnemon X. How you can find it, you can either use Blue Memory Boost, use Mental Training, or even use this Vmon to search because thanks to the fact that this Magnemon X now has a rule name, which also has the free trait, meaning that it's searchable of Vmon, is going to be really fantastic. And then eventually, when it comes to the memory, since it costs five, you want to make sure that you're not passing to your opponent too, too much when you get into Magnet X. Once you get into Magnet X, it has immunity, it has blocker, armor purge, and your opponent is going to have to deal with it and find ways to play around it. But with this kind of inheritable stack, it's instantly at 18K, which is an incredibly strong, really, really tall body that's not easy to out. And then from then on, you just want to swing with your Magnet X as much as you can when you find opportunities because when the security is removed, and you take down your opponents, you can unsuspend and activate its when digivolving effects all over again and get the immunity, get the extra DP and continue to attack and attack. And that's how you basically kind of go for that strategy and sort of win games. And this is the whole reason why Magna X costing five is a lot because that's why you would play Awakening of the Golden Knight which makes it cost three instead. Let's just say you start your turn at three memory with Shu Yu Lin. All you have to do is Awakening of the Golden Knight, digivolve here, you get the when evolving, extra 3k, unsuspend and whatnot. So therefore, these are the situations where I actually like to chip first. You chip at your opponent's security, and then you would evolve into it with Awakening of Golden Knight. You get to unsuspend, when evolving, gain extra 3k immunity. You get a swing, and keep in mind, the secondary last effect of its alterns once return of activating the when evolving effects can happen again. So you can unsuspend once more, and get immunity and another extra 3k all over again and then you can basically do triple hits in one turn if you have the memory to do so this is why i absolutely love final zubogon punch how you get access to that memory is either with blue memory boost or blinding ray by using that you can basically swing five checks in one single turn which is absolutely insane with this kind of setup 
And it does happen because you have the draw power that you need thanks to these Vmons, you have the search power thanks to the Vmons, and again, as you're digivolving quite a lot, you're also finding the pieces that you need. Now, this is not the main purpose of Blinding Ray. The main purpose of Blinding Ray is really that if your opponent is trying to be smart and play around you and try not to chip away at your security before letting Magna X activate its immunity effect, this is when you would proactively do it yourself. You play Blinding Ray, chip away your own, and you instantly will gain that immunity if you need to play around certain things. Another insane combo synergy is with Heaven's Judgment, which I mentioned earlier. With Heaven's Judgment, you minus 6k, and then for every color Digimon you have, you add another 3 to it. So you're basically effectively minusing 24k out of this one single card alone is really, really crucial and just takes out so many bodies in one go and just blows up your opponent's board. In any situations, if you have this Vmon in addition on the board, you're effectively doing five times the amount of DP reduction damage, up to 30,000. And that's incredibly insane. And this is the other reason why we play Shu Yulin. Shu Yulin can only mind link with X antibody. So that will be your Magnet X. And when you do, it gives you alliance. So then you can swing together with your Vmon for two checks. And then since the first checks went off, you can activate its Wendage Evolving again, unsuspend, gain extra DP and whatnot and then swing again and alliance again if you would like or if you can and then you can always keep it underneath it because you have reboot and you're unsuspended all over again making it difficult for your opponents to outcome the magnamon x overall and in times this is why you have zudomon ace as well because when you have your level four sitting there and your opponent disrespects you can still always go into zudo ace strip sources bounce something and you can still able to get into magna x afterwards just because Zudo is a level five and you can digivolve for four costs as well. You guys can see the entire deck really just revolves on this one single card where everything else is trying to build up around it and sort of build upon it to sort of utilize as two kits and two cards to make Magnamon X as strong as possible as your singular best boss Digimon of the entire game. Check out this gameplay video to see truly how powerful Magnamon X antibody is. Special thanks to premium and deluxe members for supporting the channel. And as always, you guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. See you in the next video. And this is about signing out.